welcome to my podcast Pregnant in Japan, your podcast about pregnancy, birth and the joy of a relaxed mother hut in Japan. My name is Vicky, I'm a German mom living in Tokyo. I'm sharing my positive birth experience to inspire you with yours. In today's episode I would like to talk about the current ongoing restrictions to um, birth partners and husbands who suddenly can't attend labor anymore. I would like to give you some ideas how you can deal emotionally with the situation but also how you can um, prepare beforehand in case you have to be alone um, during labor. I have um, seven ideas how to do this, but um, before I will present the ideas, I want to um, explain um, to you that I was in the exact same situation um, two years ago, except that everything was um, new, like COVID just uh, kicked in and we didn't know anything about it and um, uh, we didn't have any vaccinations. and. Um, Uh, yeah, we didn't know how it affects the unborn brain bee. Um, at that time, I remembered quite well, it was in spring 2020. I So I arrived in Tokyo the, in December, so just a few months before COVID started. And I had in this short time already changed hospital three times because I could not find a right facility for me where I, I felt well. And finally, I found a smaller clinic nearby, the Seijo Kinoshita clinic. And um, I was very happy <laughs> because I just couldn't deal with the situation anymore to, to keep looking. And in Japanese, it was everything extremely difficult, I thought. 2020, the hospitals or some hospitals started to ban Uh, husbands and birth partner from the hospitals um, well, during labor and I was just so desperate because um, I, I was actually the first clinic who st uh, started this process and I remember I wrote immediately my clinic and uh, asked if they gonna do the same and the answer was well we are allowing currently um, birth partners and husband, uh, husbands but uh, we can't guarantee and uh, that was the point where I thought oh no it can't start all over again and I'm not gonna do this process alone of giving birth I mean I just got to Japan I don't speak the language and um, I'm first time pregnant And I'm not doing this without my husband. So we started the research all over again. And, and at that time, I was already in touch with Stephanie Kawai and Brad Imura. And both at some point mentioned um, a birth clinic to me, the Matsugaoka Birth Center, not a clinic, sorry, um, where the restrictions are less um, strict. Also, I wasn't really sure to give birth in a birth center um, for some security reasons. And also um, when my husband was born, there were quite some complications back then. So also for him, he wanted uh, medical support. But after doing a lot of research, uh, we decided to go there. And um, we. I'm extremely thankful um, for how everything developed actually because uh, mm, I had a wonderful birth experience I would not say completely uh, painless but um, uh, I was taken care of uh, very well and I went down the natural path and um, I had developed a lot of trust into my body so actually it turned out very well for me And choosing this natural part of giving birth, it made me prepare a lot during pregnancy. And um, this is why I would like to pass on my, uh, let's say, uh, seven, <laughs> seven tips on how to give birth uh, even without a birth partner.
And before I start presenting my ideas, I would like to tell you also, I know this situation is really not easy and it's super, super difficult to manage. And I do really feel you because I, like I said, I was in the exact same situation. Um, so I really don't want to uh, whitewash the situation, not at all, or agree on on the restrictions. I just want to um, yeah, present solution because the situation, it's, it's just like this and um, um, we have to deal with it somehow. So my first idea is to understand the circumstances. I think if we try to understand why the restrictions are done, it might become a tiny bit easier to un understand, well, understand and accept, yes. And I think in life there are things we can fight for and other things um, like this restrictions, uh, we won't be able to change it overnight. So there might be... Uh, some organization that can help us and to show that study is um, um, laboring women shouldn't be alone but um, if you give birth in the next week or maybe even in the next month um, the restriction might be the same so for me um, I believe it's a good idea to accept the situation and save your energy for your baby and to invest the time to look for solution and how you can prepare. Yeah, so um, the hospitals and clinics um, want to protect as much as possible midwives and doctors um, to not get infected with COVID. And I don't want to imagine what will happen if a whole bunch of doctors and midwives get sick and have to quarantine. Who will help with labor of the next babies? And first I thought, well, but if my husband is infected with COVID, um, there is a really high sh chance I'm affected too. But if you see it from another side, um, if we are both in the hospital, Uh, there's one additional person who touches surfaces, who talks to people, and it's a uh, 50% more risk to infect other people. I know it's not easy, but maybe knowing this, it will make us understand it's not to torture us personally, it's not against us, it's more about to keep the hospital system running and so the hospital staff can keep on taking care of patients and the patients that are coming after us and the patients that um, will have babies after uh, we did. So, um, yeah, I think keeping this in mind uh, can be helpful. Okay, my second idea is, um, is, it sounds very simple, but take the time to talk with your partner or with your husband. Uh, it's a very frustrating, uh, frustrating situation and I can only imagine how many um, negative emotions uh, we can have and it's, it's also okay to feel um, the anger, to feel bad for the moment and take the time to talk about it and I'm sure also your um, partner or your husband um, doesn't feel good about it so I think uh, talking about it is um, very helpful. It sounds a little bit functional but after <laughs> taking the time to be mad um, you can move on and um, see how you can still manage a positive birth experience alone even if you are without your husband or partner. Well my next idea is um, the comparison with other mammals. So I know you might think it sounds strange, but uh, it extremely helped me during my preparation for giving birth. And I watched tons of YouTube videos um, of cats, dogs, elephants, tigers, and so on, who gave birth and how they, how they act and what they did. And with more and more research, I discovered that not only for um, animals, a birth is manageable, but also for us, for us humans. And the advantage that um, 
animals have they are much more instinct uh, driven and um, they don't have like the thinking brain let's say as we humans do um, but there are methods to um, kind of disconnect from your thinking brain and to be more um, like an animal following your instincts while watching all these videos and doing the research i um notice they are all the animals i'm talking now always hidden somewhere in an isolated space they are alone and it's often during the night <laughs> for both of us for animals and humans um, our ho hormones tell us when it's time to give birth and maybe uh, you have already noticed um, then when maybe you have seen already a cat's um, childbirth um, they can kind of um, pause or let's say stop the labor if they feel unsafe and um, it's the same for us that's also the reason why some women can't give birth if they are either surrounded by too many people or unfamiliar with a place or places to um, let's say sterile um, place like a hospital that was for example I knew um, when I was uh, at Red Cross and I know it's a very good hospital but uh, I would not be able to give birth there it was just too big too much of hospital um, atmosphere for me I was also talking about the um, about animals giving birth at night and the reason is because at night um, there is less distraction and um, th it makes them feel more safe and i also gave birth at night and the midwife told me afterwards most of the women give birth at night because that's just when they feel safe and everything is quiet and uh, it's not busy um, the night is for giving birth apparently <laughs> often not always but often <laughs> and being isolated is a big part too i think um because when you look back in history, uh, there are not only animals who gave birth, a birth isolated, but also uh, many tribes where women uh, gave birth themselves. Well, I'm not saying it's the best thing to be alone, totally alone. <laughs> I just want to say it's part of our uh, mammal roots. And especially now with this COVID situation, uh, we can remind ourselves of this natural instinct of being isolated and reminding ourselves that uh, it's also possible um, being alone. Actually, in my last episode where I interviewed uh, Caroline from Belgium, uh, she recommended a book about uh, tribes in South Africa where women uh, give um, birth. So uh, yeah, there are even books and studies about all this. I do recommend watching YouTube vi uh, videos um, of mammals giving birth and to see what we can learn from from them. They are, if you observe them, in a trance-like um, status. Even us, we can somehow um, activate a trance-like status and I actually, when in my pregnancy, I did a self-hypnosis um, course, audios. It was a very effective course. Um, I Unfortunately, I started it quite late. I found, uh, found out about it quite late, but it still helped me a lot. And uh, um, it's in German, so I don't think um, most of you speak German, <laughs> so I can't recommend it for you right now. But I'm sure there are other courses in English. This trance-like status is uh, co uh, contrary to the image of women who give birth filled with uncontrolled uh, screams. I'm not saying birth is a piece of cake, but I'm just saying um, if you search for it, if we prepare for it well, it's manageable. And the, here I talk really about my um, own experience. So um, I know it's possible. <laughs> I, of course, I know pregnancy and giving birth is for um, is for every woman different. But I do really believe um, you can affect positively 
um, the birth process when preparing with the tools that suit you. So here I'm just presenting some ideas. My next idea is about um, uh, self-hypnosis. <laughs> it, uh, it's actually related to the trance-like status I just talked uh, before about. And yeah, it might sound strange and um, it may it might f made you think of a magician, but um, it's a hypnotic state and it's uh, used as a self-help tool for controlling pain and managing stress in a lot of different areas. And there are a lot of research about self-hypnosis and it's even... Um, there have been some cases uh, where it was used uh, for surgery, so very surprising, but yeah, apparently very effective. If you practice self-hypnosis with, for example, audios, um, then it will relax your um, body, your muscles, and with this um, your baby can go through the birth canal more smoothly and natural and you are not falling falling into this um, pay, fear pain uh, cycle self-hypnosis is a big part of hypnobirthing too but um, i don't think you need to do a hypnobirthing course to um, do self-hypnosis with self-hypnosis you can reach a trance status and um, you with this you can shut off your thinking brain and um, i want to say in especially in this COVID situation where you might be alone without your partner um, then you actually if you are in this status of trance uh, you don't need anybody around you um, because everybody outside can be a distraction and you won't concentrate on your body as much anymore. When you talk to women who gave birth, they will often tell you already about a trance-like status, like everything being blurry and they don't know exactly what happened. And I experienced the same. Plus, um, if my um, husband would go out of the room, I would not notice that it didn't make a difference putting it into a nutshell at this point um, I think really um, this is a great tool to concentrate on yourself rather than um, every distraction that brings you back to the external world my fifth idea how to prepare mentally is to ask the hospital staff to show you the labor room already if it's possible if it's not possible then uh, maybe just the way to the labor room so what aisle do you have to go um, what um, on what floor is it on where's the elevator and i would also um, take videos of it or um, pictures and then while you are at home look at those pictures and prepare already mentally okay I'm going to this elevator and it's located here. Then I go to the second floor and then the labor room is on the left. And everything that you prepare in advance, it's not going to be new anymore. It's like already done. At least you don't have to concentrate on uh, the way to the labor room. Uh, maybe somebody will also guide you. Yes, possible. But uh, I just want to say it's not new anymore. You already know it. Some hospitals uh, still allow husbands to be there, but only for the last part of labor. So you could also prepare on your cell phone uh, a symbol um, or a smiley or whatever um, that you send to your husband. So you don't have to actually write the message or just agree with your husband on a symbol that you send and your husband will know okay it's time to come to the hospital or even better uh, i would just ask the hospital staff to um, to do it for you to call your husband if it's time to come so it's one thing that distracts you um, less why being on the phone when you can be with your baby and your body and concentrate on that and um Maybe the hospital, maybe it's a weird question to ask that, but you know, go for it. Just ask it. Uh, what can they do? They can just say no. So, so what? 
And here's my sixth idea that might help. If you think you can't do it without your partner, then just think about how you do it for your baby. Because often we have more power and strength when we think about how we do um, something for somebody else. If you think you do it for your baby, uh, then you are not doing it for yourself, but for your baby. <laughs> and here's my last encouraging thought. I know it's a really hard situation from my own experience. At the same time, I try to remember how ever it's going to end up with or without partner, I still ha I'm still in a great health care system. And we are lucky we are in Japan. Um, there are doctors, there are midwives, there are, there's um, um, experienced midwives and experienced doctors. Uh, we have all the medication we need just in case. And um, it's a really safe place to give birth. So um, this is something we, yeah, we, sh we can also focus on. We are taking care of, um, yeah, we are, we are lucky, really. I deeply, deeply wish you all the best and a very effective preparation and a very smooth birth. And um, I would love to hear from you what you think. Uh, I know not all advices are everybody's cup of tea, but um, it's only to present some tools and maybe one or two can be helpful for you. All the best to you.